Hi everyone, my name is Miss Hess and I'm a first grade teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary School. Hi bull pups. I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe and that you're fitting in some time each day to do some learning. Uh, last week I read a non-fiction book about some animals whose habitat, their home, is the ocean. And it was called An Ocean of Animals by Janine Scott. So we read this book, we thought about what we learned, we thought about what we wondered, and you did some writing in your journal at home uh, about what you're learning and wondering too. And now I'm going to read another nonfiction book today who's an, about an animal whose habitat is also the ocean, a big blue whale. So the title of the book is Big Blue Whale. The author, the person who wrote the book, is Nicola Davies. And the illustrations are done, that's the pictures, are done by Nick Mallon. So we'll read this book in a few moments. But first, uh, and these books are non-fiction. And last time we talked about what non-fiction books are. But just to remind you, non-fiction books are about uh, true things in real life. Okay, not an imaginary or made-up story. That's fiction. So these are non-fiction books. All right. So uh, I would like for you to think about what do you already know about blue whales? What do you think you already know? So if you were at school, you would have a partner to turn and talk to and answer that question. So since we're at our homes, we don't have a turn and talk partner. So I'd love for you to grab a stuffy or a doll or something to be your turn and talk partner. If you have a person next to you, well, of course they can be your turn and talk partner, but I don't have anybody here with me, so this will be my partner. So take a moment to go and grab a stuffy to be your turn and talk partner. Okay, I hope everybody has gathered turn and talk partner. So the question I asked was, what do you think you already know about whales? So turn and tell your partner now, what do you know about whales? I'll let my partner go first. What do you know about whales? All right, so everybody had some time to think and talk about what they know about whales. So my partner and I discussed that we know that whales are very big and that whales eat a lot. They must eat a lot to stay so big and that they live in the ocean. And one type of whale is a blue whale. So if you were thinking that same thing, you could do that. All right. So the next question I want you to talk about with your partner is what do you wonder about blue whales? What are you wondering? Okay. So. Grab your partner and talk. I'll go first this time. What do you wonder? Okay, so behind me, I have a chart here. And it says, what we wonder about blue whales. And these are some of the things my partner and I wonder. I wonder how big blue whales are. So remember, we wonder before we read a book, while we read a book, and after we read the book. It helps us to really make meaning out of the book, understand the book, and remember what we've read. Okay, and I, I wonder if blue whales are really blue. That was my partner's question. And I wonder how many babies they have. So hopefully you came up with some things you are wondering as well. And if you were here, we would add them to the list. But keep them in your mind. We're going to see if your questions are answered as we read the book, The Big Blue Whale. I'm going to read half of it today and we'll stop and wonder again. And then the next time um, that we're together, I'll read the rest of the book and we'll see how many of our questions, how many of the things we wonder are answered in the book and how many are not. The Big Blue Whale. Okay, 
as I read. Think about what you're learning as I read and think about what you're wondering. Those are your two jobs, okay? So you're thinking. So there's some words in small print here that the, the print looks like handwritten. It's a little different. I'm not reading those parts today, but I will read them in the future. The blue whale is big, bigger than a giraffe, bigger than an elephant, bigger than a dinosaur. The blue whale is the biggest creature that has ever lived on Earth. Big, biggest creature. Hmm, is that something new that you learned that you didn't know before? Reach out and touch the blue whale's skin. It's springy and smooth like a hard boiled egg and it's as slippery as wet soap. Look into its eye. It's as big as a teacup and as dark as the deep sea. Just behind the eye is a hole as small as the end of a pencil. The hole is one of the blue whale's ears. Sticking out ears would get in the way when the whale is swimming. The blue whale lives all of its long life in the sea, but it is a mammal. A mammal is, warm, is warm-blooded, it breathes air, it has a backbone, and its babies drink its mother's milk. The blue whale lives all of its long life in the sea, but it's a mammal like us, and it breathes air, not water. From time to time, it has to come to the surface to breathe through the blowholes on top of its head. When it breathes out, it makes a great misty puff as high as a house. This is the whale's blow, and you can see it from far away. You can hear it too, a great poof. And if you are close enough, you can smell it. As the whale's breath is stale, that means bad smelling. As the whale's breath is stale and fishy. So we're gonna turn and talk to our partners for a moment here. You're gonna talk about what did you learn about blue whales so far in the first few pages that I read? What did you learn about blue whales? So grab your partner and tell them, what did you learn? So my partner and I discussed something we learned that is that whales are the biggest creature on earth, blue whales, and that they have tiny, tiny ears. I didn't know that before. And that they have blow holes that um, when they breathe out, a great misty puff as high as a house. I didn't know it was as high as a house. So that was something that surprised me. Maybe you were thinking the same things that my partner and I talked about, or maybe you thought about something different that we didn't think about. I'm gonna continue reading now. Take a look inside its mouth. Don't worry, the blue whale won't, doesn't eat people. It doesn't even have any teeth. It has hundreds of baleen plates instead. They're the long, bristly, I mean stiff and straight. They're the long, bristly things hanging down from its top jaw. You see all these here? Those are the baleen plates. The whale doesn't need teeth for biting or chewing because its food is tiny. What are you thinking about now? Did you learn something new on this page? The blue whale eats krill. There's a krill right here. Pale pinkish shrimp-like creatures the size of your little finger. Ooh, try to visualize how big they are. Billions of them live in the cold seas around the North and South Poles. In summer, there can be so many that the water looks pink. So that's when blue whales come to the polar seas to eat. It takes an awful lot of tiny krill to feed a great big blue whale. But the whale doesn't catch them one at a time. It is a special way of swallowing whole swarms. That means large groups of, of um, small, animals. So you could have a swarm of insects, right? It's just a large group of them. It is a special way of swallowing whole swarms of them at once.
First, it takes a huge gulp of krill and salty seawater. There's room for all this because the whale's throat unfolds and opens out like a vast, that means very big, and opens out like a vast balloon. Then it uses its big tongue to push the water out between its bristly baleen plates. So here's a picture. The water streams away and leaves the krill caught on the bristles like peas in a sieve. A sieve is a bowl with many small holes in it. The water streams away and leaves the krill caught on the bristles like peas in a sieve. Now all the whale has to do is lick them off and swallow them. Now you're going to take a moment to talk to your turn and talk partner about what does a blue whale do to eat whole swarms of krill? What do they do to eat whole swarms of krill? Okay, go ahead and get your partner and turn and talk. My partner and I discussed how the whale opens its mouth really big and takes a big gulp of krill and water, right? Like kind of like a big balloon, its throat opens. And he uses his tongue to push um, out, push the water out and keep the krill in there. Maybe you and your partner talked about something like that too. So now that's where I'm gonna stop today. I will read the rest of the book. Um, and we'll see if um, what else we learn about big blue whales. But I want you to think about in the first half of the book that I read today, what did you learn as I read? Um, was there anything that surprised you? So go ahead and think to yourself, what did you learn? What surprised you? Do some thinking. You can tell your partner if you want to. Something that I learned was that they eat, they eat krill and they must eat so much krill in order to stay so big, right? There must be just millions of krill all over the ocean. And it was interesting to learn um, about how they eat the krill on this page. Okay, now, I'd like to go back to our what we wonder about blue whales chart here. And we wondered before we read the book and now we've read half the book and we're gonna write down what else we wonder. So I want you to think before I start writing, talk to your partner, what do you wonder now about blue whales? Were any of the questions we had so far answered? Wondering that and then what other things are you wondering? What other questions do you have? Okay, so turn and tell your partner, what are you wondering now? So, my partner and I had some things we were wondering, and maybe you were wondering the same things. We were wondering, I wonder how long it takes a blue whale to feel full. talked about how they eat the krill, but how much they have to eat before they get full. Something else I am wondering is, I wonder how fast a blue whale can swim. Maybe you're wondering 
the same. And I also was wondering, I wonder how long can they stay underwater before they have to come up to get some air? How long can they stay underwater? So some of these things we're wondering will be answered as we finish the book in the next few um, lessons that we do together and some things won't be answered. And if our questions aren't answered, there are many ways to get the answers to our questions. So we'll talk about that later. First, we'll see what things are answered and what are not. And then we'll talk about what to do. Okay. So I grabbed my own nonfiction book from my house because it's time now for everyone to go read. If you have a nonfiction book, grab it and read it. If you don't, go ahead and read any book because we can think about what we learn and what we wonder in any book that you have available to you. <clears throat> so this book is called I Am Tiger. Um, it's a discovery book and it's nonfiction book. It's about true things with real information in it. And I'm gonna read a little bit of it and model for you that I am thinking about what I'm learning, thinking about what I'm wondering, and then I'm gonna write those things down after I read my own book, okay? I Am a Tiger, written by Lori C. Frob. Rawr! I am a tiger cub. I am small now. One day I will be a big cat. Tigers are the biggest cats on earth. I'm not gonna read the whole book, I'm just gonna read a few pages. There are six kinds of tigers alive today. All tigers live in Asia. Asia is a large continent. Can you tell us apart? So it shows the Bengal tiger, South China tiger, Siberian tiger, Malayan tiger, Sumatran tiger, and an Indo-Chinese tiger. And they all live in Asia. So thinking about what are you, as I read my book, what are you wondering and learning from my book? I am a Siberian tiger. My family lives in a country called Russia. Siberia is part of Russia. We live in the forest. It can get very cold in winter. The world has many big cats. Cheetah, jaguar, tiger, lion, leopard. Siber Siberian tigers are the biggest cats of all. I will be 600 pounds one day. My body will be 10 feet long from head to tail. All right, I'm gonna pause there and I will pretend as if I read the entire book. But when I finish my book, I can grab my Making Meaning Student Response book if you have that at home. If you don't, no problem. If you grab a Seattle Public Schools packet that they're distributing at lunch sites, you can grab that. And if you don't have that, don't worry. Just grab a piece of paper. All right, I just grabbed a big piece of paper. You can use a regular piece of paper. And I am going to write down um, what I learned and what I wonder on my piece of paper. So first I'll start with the title of my book. My book is called, I Am a Tiger. So I'm gonna write, I, am a tiger. Okay, so first I'll write down one thing or multiple things that I learned when I read my book. Okay, so it says, I learned that tigers only live in Asia. You can also say, I also learned, you can write more things, right? All right. Then at the bottom, it says, I wonder. I wonder why tigers only live in Asia. Okay, and I can write more things I'm wondering as well. Now it's your turn. 
you're going to grab a book, nonfiction if you have it, but it's okay if you don't, and you're gonna grab your packet or a piece of paper, you're gonna read your book, and then you're gonna write down one, at least one thing that you learned and at least one thing that you wondered as you read. Okay, thanks for watching this video today, and I'm excited for you to go get started with your reading and your wondering and thinking about what you're learning. All right, see you next time. Thank you.